No, I sold drugs. My mama was an alcoholic, and I had two kids by a married man by the time I was 15. I dropped out of school, got in an abusive rela relationship with a married man. He shot me, then another dude shot me, and then I had to go have a talk with God and say, I'm tired of being shot so many times in the same year. And um, I, eventually I got into selling drugs and went to prison. That's my theme song. Nice. It is nice, huh? <laughs> Are you struggling? What? Dad? What? This to come this way? Me come this way? They're telling me to. Well, I'm not. This is Howie Mandel. Uh, this is Howie Mandel does stuff. This I'm, is my daughter. I'm Jacqueline, Jacqueline Schultz. Schultz. Yeah. Hey. Hi. Hi. What do you? Why do you have a look like you don't? And and this is our guest, Miss Pat, who I absolutely love. But Miss Pat, why were you when I said this is my daughter? Why did you have that puzzled look? I, I, I thought you had like small babies running around the house it's in pampers. I, it's because I she have does. hair, right? Ah. Because I have hair. Yeah. People are she has them. small babies running around the house. Well, they're not even small. They're old now. No. Yeah. Really? How old is your kids? They're not old. They're six and seven. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> they, they're not well, in she's, <laughs> she's closer to 40. I've been married for 42 years. I'm You've been married be, 42 years? Yeah, I'm almost 67 this year. Oh. Well, you, again, another puzzled look from I me. I, you've been around a long time, but I didn't realize you was that old. Thank you. I, mean, I, I didn't know Thank that. I didn't know that. I didn't know, know that. I know. <laughs> Try to fix that. Fix that. You shouldn't say, oh, well, at least you're not a woman because, you know, women really take offense. Oh, oh, my God. I have no problem with getting old. This is what I love. This is so this is Miss Pat. And Miss Pat, who has you're on a You're like a it's a fucking rocket because uh, I think it was like three years ago or four years ago, maybe Three, four years ago. Three, four years ago, I'm in the lobby of a hotel in Montreal, Canada, and I was at Just for Laughs, and she was coming out of an elevator, and I, I swear to you, I didn't know her, and she said, hi, Howie Mandel, and I said, hi, and she goes, I'm Miss Pat, and within, I, I think we've talked before, but within two minutes, is there something that's got to be fixed? No, people are coming in and adjusting things. Within mm -hmm. two minutes of meeting you, you gave me a synopsis mm -hmm. and a really specific synopsis of uh, some shit that happened to you. Yeah, I just say, hey, I'm Miss Pat. I'm an ex drug dealer. I got shot a couple of times and I think I told you I got hit by a dump truck. And you were like, what the hell? No, no, I don't remember that. We'll talk about the dump truck. But you told me, you told me, hi, my nipple was shot off. Oh, my nipple was shot off. Okay, yeah. I love telling people I got shot in the titty. And I did. <laughs> That's quite an introduction. Yeah, hi, I'm Miss hey. Pat. I got I shot in the titty. Oh, I needed to catch his attention. I just couldn't walk up and say, hey, I'm a comedian. But I figured if I, I told him I was missing a nipple, he like, oh, why? where's your handicapped parking sticker? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you use handicapped parking because I, you missed the nipple? I, I had a handicapped parking sticker, sticker for life because my father passed and left it to me because that's all he could, he could give me. And my husband threw it away. So I don't have it anymore. That's almost a sad story. No, that's a no, way well, it is because he threw it away and I was going I was going to use it for the rest that's of my life. That's all your father left you was a handicap. Are you allowed to stick. do that? No, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> Mind your business. Okay, sorry. <laughs> when, you, when you're missing a nipple, your equal liberty is yeah, off. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> yes, this is my daughter. She has both her nipples. Yeah. Wait, I that's horrible. Two. What? One just raggedy. I, I, I do too. One just had a bullet go through it, so it's a little raggedy. <laughs> that's okay. I've had kids, so down there is a little raggedy. No, I, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> this is my it, it, Wait, hey, it's nothing like when it's when you get older and uh -huh. they start leaking and you... Be Leaking? Your vagina leaks? Oh, yeah. It's going to leak like a 64 Chevy. Oh. Yeah, that's why That's why you can't leave home without a panty liner. <laughs> I didn't know that. The more you know. And the more babies you have, the more they stomp it out, and it's going to leak even more. Uh, oh. Okay, well, then I'm done. <laughs> okay. Girl, All right, Dad. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> Your daddy can get you Welcome to Girl Talk. <laughs> Your daddy can get it fixed for you. <laughs> well, I'm no. not gonna have nothing to do with my daughter's vagina, and uh, it's good. To, it, it, I was gonna say, are you willing to open up the uh, at, for this podcast? <laughs> Apparently, we don't want you to because you're leaking like a '64 Chevy. <laughs> so, <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dad. I only okay. thinking about my baby, my baby leaking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not thinking about her. You know oh, what's good. funny? You get to go home after this, and you don't really need to talk to him again. Now I get to go home after this and be like, shit, now my dad knows, like, I have a floppy vagina. Hey, 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 <laughs> what the fuck? Seriously? Sorry. I'm sorry, daddy. Sometimes <laughs> floppy vaginas show up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, go ahead, dad. I'll stop. It's your turn. Tag, you're it. 
Okay. So I met her, <laughs> yeah. and I was fascinated by her. We're going to talk uh, to her a little bit about her life, but you you wrote a book. There was a book which mm -hmm. I read, Rabbit. Yes. Yes, I read it. Oh, really? You Thank know that. You. I call, what do you mean? No, really? Oh, that's Thank right. You. you did. You, you, you. We talked about it. I, I was blown away by it, and you have an incredible history, um, a, an incredible life, an incredible, probably a life that a lot of people that we don't. Uh, talk to publicly have, mm -hmm. you know, um, fill my daughter in a, l a little bit. I, you grew up, your mo your mother sold my drugs. No, I sold drugs. My mama was an alcoholic and I had two kids by a married man by the time I was 15. I dropped out of school, got in an abusive rela relationship with a married man. He shot me, then another dude shot me, then I had to go have a talk with God and say, I'm tired of being shot so many times in the same year. And um, I, eventually I got into selling drugs and went to prison and got out and, and then I just I started praying I said Lord I need a black a black man or a good man with back teeth that don't punch me in the eye on Friday and bam my husband showed up wow and I've been married now almost 30 years and you manifested that you uh, did that God yeah. did that yeah. God did that <laughs> shot twice in the same year and I was like they, they these motherfuckers gonna kill me <laughs> so weird that you were shot in the oh I meant you manifested I thought you said you met your current husband now yeah, after yeah, that. Okay. Yeah, after I was shot. I didn't say you man I didn't mean that you manifested what happened previously. Oh, oh not a manifest. Okay. <laughs> it's not what I meant. But anyway, she wrote this book. She had this great story and you also told me that through I th I think it was through your uh, uh parole officer. You started telling or these groups, no. you started telling stories about things. It was things. my caseworker. Yeah. And my caseworker cuz I was on the I was on welfare the work program. I had just voted for Bill Clinton because he was a cute white dude. I wasn't a Democrat or Republican. I just stuck the fly in because I wanted to vote, you mm -hmm. know, and they hadn't taken my right. So it was Bill Doe and Bill Clinton. And so I took in, I was like, Bill Doe is ugly, wrinkled, and white. This man is gorgeous. So I just took it to the poll and said, I want to vote for him. And that's <laughs> how he became a Democrat. And the next year, he started the Welfare to Work program. So I had to go through that program, and I started telling the caseworker all these crazy stories how I grew up. And she was like, you should really be a comedian. You have stories like Richard Pryor. And I was like, a comedian? Why would I want to do that? And every time I came in, she would just block a couple of hours off, you know, to talk to me. And, and then she was like, you should, you should really try it. And so I, I tried it. And she ended up writing the book about her life. Lee Daniels, Brian Grazer, uh, did they see the book or did they see you? Um, well, I did Mark Maron podcast and one of their execs heard it. And then they got the book and they read uh, they read it and they called me in. And Lee Daniels, Brian Grazer and, you know, it's uh, Ron Howard, Imagine, yeah. all of that. And they called me in and they uh, wanted to uh, give me a show. And now that show is an Emmy-nominated huge hit on BET going into, well, we're, we're starting the second season, started. but you got picked up for the third, right? Uh-huh. It was BET Plus. Uh, we just finished taping the third season. We just released the second season today. Fantastic. Wow. Congratulations. So that is amazing. And I am and so proud of you. And it's about your life, right? The, yes. No, it's real. I've watched it. I got to say, what what is amazing about it is, you know, I talk about humor always because in this culture that we come from, this cancel culture that we come from, people say you can't say this and you can't say that. But I always say that, you know, comedy comes from darkness. Yes, that sense of humor, nothing, if you laugh at a clown falling down, you're laughing at somebody else's mis misfortune. Mm -hmm. It always, two guys walk into a bar on a joke, something shitty has to happen to one of them for it to be a joke. Otherwise it's just two guys having a, a drink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a night out. So. But that's, I think you know that, I know that, maybe our some of our listeners and viewers know that, but I, think, I don't think the average person knows it. What is really refreshing about what they saw in you and what you're doing is, because I had read the book, and I'm looking at episodes that are <laughs> really, really your life. And if you just tell the, the story of what happened, like if I just say this woman is coming in and sitting down, she's been shot twice, she was sexually abused. She's been to prison. She sold drugs. Isn't that funny? Yeah. No, I don't think anyone. Me. Yeah, it is you. <laughs> no, but that I would think that it's not a hard tell, and obviously everyone loves it. But I would think going into a network that would be a hard sell. Well, it, it was a. The thing was, is I, you just had to get them to open their eyes, and I tell people all the time, I'm not, I'm not the typical person that will walk in your office. You know, you. Because 
I mean, you know, Hollywood got the whole vision of what everybody should be. The fat girl should be this. The skinny girl should be this. The bald guy should be this. And I just walked in and I said, I'm not your typical whatever you used to put on TV. I want to, you know, the show that I'm trying to sell is not about a mom who cook and chop vegetables. This is a mom with a background. I've been to prison. I know how to cook cocaine, but I cannot bake a muffin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am a fat girl, but you're not gonna make me uh no make me chase a man because I've never had a problem in my real life getting laid. So you I need a man who's gonna love a fat girl. And I just told him, you're not hitting me in my face with no pies. That's not what I do. And so I painted this picture of something that they had never really seen before. Right. Though incredibly relatable and real. Mm -hmm. Even though we haven't seen it, there's probably, you know, the the sitcom mom that we are used to in this country. Is probably not is probably non-existent in life. You are real. Yes. You are real, and I don't think that you're alone in whatever struggles that you've had to come through. And I think a good portion of people really struggle. And I think that when I watch the show, not only is it funny, but you're incredibly authentic. And to be authentic and to know that this is real and to watch and know the journey that you personally has gone through is, is incredibly uplifting and important at this time for people to see. Do you feel like you are, um, do you feel any responsibility as being some sort of leader or symbol okay, for what? The way. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I do because I speak, you know, I speak on so many dark topics in the show, like sexual abuse and, you know, dropping out of school and making mistakes. And you look like they don't show that on sitcom mom. And so I get so many letters and so many emails like, oh, my God, Miss Pat, thank you for telling my story. Thank you for being real. And, you know, one of the things I got, I got a, a letter last night and the lady was like, you are a plus size woman on TV, but they showing that you being loved. And they don't really show that, you know, they have this, you know, this vision of what a couple should be like. Everybody eat green juice. No, I eat pork chop sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> well, not anymore, but I do eat Chick-fil-A. <laughs> so, you know, I do. I mean, all the time, every time we create an episode, I did an episode season two about black hair. You know, black hair is trauma. trauma. It was traumatizing for me because as a little girl, I would sit between my mama leg and get called nappy head and you ugly and stuff like that. And I knew I wasn't the only little black girl out there that had went through that. And that's why I, I didn't like my hair. That's why I permed my hair. And that is the episode. It's only been out. It haven't even been out 24 hours. And that's all they're talking about on Twitter. Wow. So do you feel a responsibility or you're just, you, you, uh, do you have blinders? Are you, uh, do you, do you realize that you are kind of affecting, it's not just your career? Yeah. I mean, I just, to me right now, I just try to keep it as work so I don't get emotional. It just, I just try to keep going. And I, they ask me that all the time. You know, do you feel like you're responsible? Do you feel like you're leading? I said, I feel like I go, I'm going to work. And that's what I want to feel like right now. Okay. And going to work, when you're sitting on, you know, I saw you on uh, The Daily Show the other day, and you're in studios, and the, the biggest people in this business are surrounding you, and you have books out. Do you ever come outside of yourself and go, look, at I'm sitting in a studio today with an audience going crazy for me. So many years back, I was sitting in an eight by eight foot cell, not knowing what tomorrow was going to bring. Does that vision ever come to you? I try to keep that vision away. Is it bad that I just brought that no, up? No, 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 it's not. It's not, you know, because when you look back over any time you've been through stuff in your life, and, you know, you get emotional, you know, because I, I wasn't supposed to make it. I've been shot. I dropped out of school. I grew up in poverty. And um, I think I have a tendency of just saying it's just work and I don't want to feel sorry for myself. And my husband asked me, I tell him, are you ever going to slow down and, 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 you know, just live in the moment? And I don't know. I don't, I don't want Do to feel it right now. Well, uh, as somebody uh, who, and I talk about this almost on every episode, I struggle with mental health issues and I stay really busy doing, you know, the reason I'm doing this podcast and I'm doing AGT and different things. I don't want to slow down because I don't want to think. Do you feel like you're distracting yourself from the shit that you've been through? And you feel like if you slowed down that maybe that would catch up with you uh, mentally? Do you feel like you're staying busy to avoid? Maybe. <laughs> Nobody's ever asked this fucking great question. You <laughs> ask. I, I don't know why I'm staying so busy. Maybe. I mean, maybe I don't want to. I mean, I remember sometimes. Well, I tell you, sometimes it hits me when I'm on a plane and I sit there and I'm like, oh, my God, 
I can't believe I'm here. And tears will start to fall. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking the juxtaposition from, uh, I read your book. <laughs> and ever since I read your book, your book really moved me. Thank because, you. and I'll tell you why your book moved me. Because even somebody who doesn't have a, an iota of um, experience to know what it was like to go through anything that you went through mm -hmm. or to be you, we all have our reasons to say, I can't. Yes. Or it won't. Everybody does. And 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 those are, you know, Nike lives on this uh the saying of just do it, you know, and, and they're trying to tell you, don't think, just just move forward, just do it. And I've had a, many mental blockages in, in my life to not allow me to do things. I just try to stay busy so I'll do it and I'll end up here and then I can go, shit, I'm here. You had a quite a the the fact that you have come from my point of view, because I read the book the little girl that I'm reading about in the book and sitting here looking at you under these lights, looking beautiful, being incredibly successful, having the whole world laid out in front of you from what I read was a very dark fucking wall is amazing. It was. It's, it's like magic. No, it is. It's not, it was, it, it is. It, it and is. the journey continues. And I, I'm fascinated uh, how mentally you just, you deal with this and how does it, do you feel like you were traumatized at all by any, uh, all oh, this shit? You know, I, 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 with pain, I learned with me with pain, I took it and I put it in a closet, I suppressed it so I didn't have to feel it. And so now with all of this success coming out, I tell you the first thing, I was very scared to be famous. I, didn't, Why? I wanted the money, but I didn't want the fame because in my head, I had a mom that said I was ugly and I was this and I was that. And when you have somebody do that to you, you know, even my mom is dead and gone and I've forgiven her for what she did to me, but that control is still there. It's like somebody who's in an abusive relationship. That voice can always come back. And at any time, it could take you over. So you I would think when you say that, I would think that you would chase fame even more because people will come. Well, well, you're saying I want the money, but wouldn't you want people to say, oh, you're, look at you, you're famous, or that's the lady from TV, or I want to be with you, or I want to meet you. You would think you'd want to draw people in well, because you never had it. After the book, I had a block. I was scared when the book got so much attention. And I remember it was up for NAACP Image Award, and all I had to do was go out and get people and vote. I didn't tell one person because I was scared to win. And I told my husband, uh, I said, I don't really want to be famous, but I love what I'm doing. And he said, you're not the only person out there scared to be famous. And we had this long talk, and I had to really beat myself to get through that because I just wanted to go up under the radar. And, it, and I don't know what I was hiding from. I don't know if I was hiding from my kid's father who um, I didn't want to see me on top because he, he was a part of the abuse. He's the guy that shot you, right? Yeah, he shot me in the back of the head. Is he alive? Mm -hmm. Is he in prison? No. How's that possible? Nobody cared. What, what, what are you saying? I mean, I was 15 when he shot me. He was a 23-year-old married man. I mean, I thought I was in love. I didn't press any charges. No, but, uh, uh, do you have to press charges when you're shot in the head? No. You just don't tell who shot you. <laughs> so you didn't, you've never said. I never told the police who shot me. I was in love. I, you know, I grew up. You were in love my, still after you were shot? Yeah. My mama said if he don't hit you, he don't love you. So when he shot me, and he had a lot of girlfriends. So when he shot me, I was like, oh my God, I'm number one. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he didn't shoot the rest of you hoes, so I'm number one. <laughs> Wait, you, were you, he shot you in the head, in the, and then you didn't lose consciousness? Did you yeah, break? I lost consciousness. It's cracked my skull. So I wake up in this big it's hole in the back of my head. I call 911 and call my girlfriend. They was like, I don't know how the hell you alive. So, okay. How long were you hospitalized? Oh, like two days. They didn't even sew it up. He didn't. It didn't go in. It just. It just tore the back of my head out. It just tore the back of your head out. Yeah. And and they and and you just went home. Yeah. And nobody came to the hospital to say mm -hmm. who did this. Mm -mm. I Are don't you? remember. I don't remember the police getting involved. To be honest with you, because I just like, you know, I just kept it to myself, and I was underage too. It's, you know, I look back over my life now, how, and I was like, 
I was, I, let me, when you poor and black in America, let's be honest, nobody gives a fuck. And let's be honest, when you poor in America, nobody cares, especially when you black in America. So nobody cares. I mean, you got this 22 year old man sleeping with a 12 year old, picking her up from elementary school. Everybody turn their head and say, oh, well, somebody got to buy some McDonald's or Mama can't. <laughs> so nobody cared. This is unfucking believable. It's, it's, it's shocking to me. Yeah, and it's, it's a, it's, it, let me tell you, I'm it's, surprised it's that, it, that and, and you're, 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 you're waking real. me up because <laughs> I would imagine that if a, if a young 15 year old, I was 12, he was 22 married. Speaking is, me, I was at, I was at Dean Rush Elementary. I was pregnant in elementary school at 12. Uh huh. If you went from elementary to high school back in those days because I'm 50. So now a pregnant 12-year-old comes in who's shot in the head and the, the hospital doesn't... Oh, but he shot me during the summer. So, so what does is... that mean? So it means that the school teachers, the school was out, so she had some time to heal. But, but the, the executives at the hospital don't say there's a young woman with a, well, with a gunshot? Up, she, I, I had a baby at 14 by this man. He walks in with his ID and signed my baby birth certificate. Nobody says shit. So why are you talking about the gunshot wound? Let's talk about the birth certificate. It didn't even done on me until. Um, what city is this? Is this Atlanta? Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So it's a big city, a, bet, a big metropolis city. I didn't care. I had two kids by him. He signed both of their birth certificate. He's 22 on one, I think, and 23 on the other one. Does he have anything to do? I saw, that, I saw an episode where he comes to visit. Oh, he hates me. And you know it was good about. But I, I saw that episode on, of your show where uh, that's what's nominated son, for an Emmy. The son wants the the son wants him to see him. Mm -hmm. You don't want him around, and your husband doesn't want him to show up at the house. Did he ever come and see his kid at the house? Is that a true story? Yeah, it was just a way for me to get my power back. But he tried, but he didn't want anything. You know, after I met my husband, he was like, "Well, well, we're not messing around in, in no no more. Let him be the daddy." Cause you gotta remember, I'm messing with a married man, but those are not. He already had two kids by his wife. He had a total of twenty some kids by the time I left. So my kids didn't, wasn't special. They were just at the top of the food chain. You know, they was number three and four. <laughs> Fuck. I don't know what that you are. It, this is absolutely shocking, and it's absolutely uh, it's ho horrible. It's horrible that there was nobody around, not one other person. Like, it's one thing that you live in this dark place of, you know, you are a, a victim of, you know, well, your, your surroundings and your environment. Mm -hmm. But then you're saying in the summer, so the schools weren't around, but then the hospitals are there and there's cops there. Nobody and cared. Then, nobody, but you're saying it and it's true. Nobody cared. They care now. They didn't care then. Do they care now? Do you, you think, think it's, it's different? Oh, is it, you touch a, a 12-year-old, now you're going to fucking jail. Get, walk down there and sign a 12-year-old birth certificate. I don't give a fuck if you, how poor she is. You're going to jail. But it took a lot. You're talking about 30 years ago. Well, my daughter's 35, 36. So you're talking about 36 years ago. A lot of things She's 37. Changed. Really? Uh-huh. Yeah. And now a word from our sponsor, Better Help. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> you, I'm just laughing because it was out of nowhere. I know. They edit us in, and then we do it. We're in the, right in the middle of talking to Miss Pat, and then, bang, we're doing a commercial for Better Help, which is okay. a great sponsor because who doesn't need help? You need help. I know it. Thank you, Dad. But I know I need help. Well, I use uh, you could say thank you because I'm the reason. I've been very open about mental health problems, about being neurotic, about having OCD, about just dealing with everything I have to deal with. And apparently it was, a lot of it was genetic because I passed it on to you. Yes, I do go to therapy. Okay, and that helps. You need therapy. But not just me, not just you, everyone should go to therapy. That's, everyone should take care of their mental health. That's why I'm really excited about this sponsor, Better Help, because we all use it. It makes me more productive. It makes me happier. It allows me to function. And we have something special that we can offer our listeners. 10% off, right? Right. Yeah. Tell them about it. Our listeners get 10% off. Their first month at betterhelp.com slash Howie. That's betterhelp, better H-E-L-P dot com slash Howie. Boom. You know what I find amazing? Going, I know this isn't about your specific story, but like you're telling it and you're laughing and giggling and you say you find humor in it and that's part of like what the show is and it's doing so well. I find it so challenging to laugh with you when I hear 
these because stories you, because it's the way I say it. I mean, you, I can tell this story sad. I can yeah. back up and make you cry. Right. I can back up and we can all cry together. Right. I choose to laugh because when you laugh, it's heal. It's it's healing. Right. I mean, and I, the biggest thing I say every night on stage. Uh, stop crying over shit you can't stop dwelling over things you don't have control over i can't change my past i can't pick my mama i couldn't pick my daddy i couldn't pick my past but i got control of my future and that's the only thing that matters that's incredible so i like to laugh i love that do you have complete control like writing control when it comes to your show if you see because i'd I'd imagine it's the youngest showrunner it's this kid i met him he's a kid yeah uh what's his name jordan cooper Jordan Cooper is the uh, the youngest showrunner, mm-hmm. I think, in television. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How old he's, is he? He's 26. And Lee Daniels handpicked him? Handpicked him, went out and found him. Went out and found him. He's and a I have total control of what we put out there about me. Um, we did an episode of this season about my mama boyfriend molesting me. And he wanted to do it the first season. And, you know, I had just started telling that story out loud. You know, because when you've been, a lot of time when you've been traumatized, your brain will block it. So you can live. And so when these memories started to come back, I had to call my sister and say, do you remember Mr. John taking us to the graveyard and doing this to us? And she was like, yeah. (laughs) And so I realized it wasn't just something in my mind. It was real. So I would ask her and see how much she remember. And when he wanted to do it the first season, I was like, I'm not ready. And so we had wrote the strip, and I said, I, I don't want to do that. I, that's too heavy for me. And so we did it this 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 uh this season. It's very funny, but it it also is very touching and it's real. And my co my co star Tammy Roman, who plays my sister, you know, doing this episode, I I realized she had experienced something similar. And when I tell you, it broke that audience down. That's all they're talking about. Episode three is the house in episode seven and then the finale. But I think that in itself is incredible because I can say from hearing from your experiences even that when you sell a show, they'll agree to an idea and they say they love the idea. And then when they take the idea, all of a sudden it changes and it doesn't become yours anymore. Right. And they morph it. And so it's amazing that you have complete control. They're allowing you to tell your story the way that it is and that it is real life. I'm 50 and I'm willing to walk away. I mean, and I, I told I told this ex at Fox, I said, you can never give me as much money as I can steal from you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love you by that fuck you up. <laughs> so I, I was never I never did this for the money. I mean, it's it's a craft to me. It's, it's art. I love doing comedy. And before I let you dog walk me to put me on TV, I go back to the damn stage. I own the stage. This is their TV show. At any time they can cut the lights off. I can always go home to the stage. That's why I still tour. So I can have control of my life. You're never gonna ding on money in my face. Now, I used to steal. I used to force checks. I know how to get money. <laughs> now that you're getting it legally and you're getting a, <laughs> and you're getting a lot, what was your first what was your first kind of purchase or like what did you wanna, you know, uh, spoil yourself with? Uh what did I spoil myself with? Um I, I, I bought seven acres in Atlanta. Seven acres? Yes, I bought, I tore a house down. I bought seven acres with a 3,500 square foot house on it. And I wanted to build a really big house, but I didn't want to, I didn't want a really big mortgage. So I always think, you know, I got to keep stuff where I can pay for it. If this stuff go away, I can just go to Walmart and get a job. So <laughs> I bought a house and the mortgage is like 15, I think $1,800 and I knocked it down. And I built a fourteen thousand square foot house. Shit. And and you do a lot. I I noticed that you do like home renovations yourself. I uh, love it. I love it. You, you were building. I saw you. Do, I'm do it. still building it. I I went. I'm a, I'm my general. I'm my general contractor. Yeah. So she, Wait, are you one of those people that watch AGTV and you're like, I'm doing it. I'm doing it myself and I'm I've starting been, tomorrow. <laughs> and it's beautiful. You should see. I saw her do a whole room makeover on Instagram. I did. Really? I did it. Um, in my house, I just sold. And um, I, I guy came in and I wanted a built in. And he's like, uh, I think three or four thousand dollars. I was like, I asked my husband. I was like, how much that would? How much would he, he gonna use for that? He's like two hundred, three hundred dollars. I was like, shit, we can do this ourselves. <laughs> so I went out and did it myself, and it turned out beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. Wow. And what do you? Seven acres is a lot of land, yeah. and even a lot of land for a fourteen thousand square foot house. What yeah. do you do with the land? 
I, I put a lot of stuff on. I'm building a lot of stuff on. You're building things. Yeah. What I have you, some what? natural water going through the back. So like one or two acres, you know, you really can't touch because of the natural water going, you know, water. You can't. I know touch. what water is. <laughs> yeah, Do I not look like I know what water, water. is? water. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but uh, like, are you growing things? Are no, you... not yet. I don't want to grow anything. I mean, my husband is retired now. What did he do? He, he worked at General Motors for 22 years. Wow. So he had eight years to go before full retirement. And after the show was picked up for the second season, I said, man, it's time to go. I'll put in your early retirement. And that was hard to get him retired because I've been with him 30 years. He'd never been without a job. So <laughs> he retired and we came home to Atlanta. And is he happy being retired? And uh, yeah, he's happy. He's spending money like we're rich. <laughs> you <laughs> he's are rich. bored. <laughs> <laughs> but you're rich. Would you not consider yourself rich no, now? No. no. You rich, Howie. What, I'm doing okay. I'm not asking you what you're making, <laughs> but what do you think is rich? Like what it, what amount would you say is somebody's rich? Because I would imagine in the realm of this country, you would be considered rich. I, I would be considered rich. Right. But in my world, right. uh, I'm okay. What's rich? You. No, give me a number. <laughs> Twenty million dollars. <laughs> that's it. Uh, well, fifty million dollars. No, no, I'm not saying that's it. Like that, like that much more. <laughs> but I'm saying, like when you reach twenty million dollars, you'll go. That's it. I made no, it. No, I will. <laughs> I'll probably say I got to keep working. <laughs> yeah, you will. <laughs> Everything's get bigger. You know, more money, more problems. <laughs> Is that true? I don't know. I try to stay normal. Like I go to Walmart and I do my grocery shopping. Um, I do you try. find that, 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 that you're saying more money, more problems? Do you find, has there been? I haven't had any problems because, no. I mean, I, I'm the type of person that I've I've been to the bottom, so I don't get crazy. I don't need the jury. I don't need all the flashiness. I try to stay undercover. I buy a car. I buy a house. It's just all about family to me. So and if I go broke, it's going to be from not taking nice vacations. You take care of a lot of people. I do. You do. I, I, and even before this level of success, you've been doing it. You've, yes. been, you've always, and that was another thing that impressed me. You take in a lot of people. I raised my sister four kids and I had, four, I had three nieces. Now I have my one of my niece, four kids, and I've had them 10 years. So how many kids are, or how many people right now are in your house? It's like nine of us. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's a full-time job. <laughs> And she's and she was she's been doing that for a decade. She hasn't yeah. had a show for a decade. She hasn't had the book for a decade. She was doing. How are you? How are you able to uh, maintain that? Uh, in the beginning, when I first got my sister kids, uh, uh, they had me her, her four kids, and all they gave me was Section Eight, was based on your income, rent, and say, "Well, hey, go take care of them four kids." And so I got a job, and then. I started doing vending at the dome, and I just did ours and ends. Wait, you I'm were a vendor at the dome at the uh -huh. Atlanta Dome? What do you, what do you sell? Hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but so I, the one that, going up and down the aisles, uh -huh. hot dogs. <laughs> I did a little bit of everything because I I also had three kids of my own. I had four kids of my own, and I had my sister four kids, and here I am, twenty two, married, and we got all these dang kids. And your husband was okay with taking in? Yeah. He was okay. Why do you have to take care of your sister's kids? Is She's on drugs. She's still? still on drugs. Yeah, that's why I got her grandkids. Her, their mom on drugs. Yeah. So uh, do you uh, do you try to get her off of it? No. Is there a, no. Yeah, let me why? tell you something. People choose that. I tried. When I, my niece was homeless uh, one December, I go home. She had a baby that's two weeks old. Uh, boyfriend is in jail, at, you know, break, breaking my heart. You know, they live in from hotel to hotel. And they, they mom had came and got them like maybe eight years before and just screwed their life up. And I was like, I'm done with my family. So I don't know why God made me get off this exit. And my niece called me and said, my niece Crystal was homeless and with four, with four kids. She was pregnant when I seen it. And when I went back for Christmas, she had, had the baby two weeks. And so I said, God, I don't have time for this. I really don't, I'm trying to build a comedy career. So I tell my niece, my father had passed like a year ago because he was living with me also. So I said, well, come on. I got this 6,000 square foot house. Ain't nobody there but my two kids and my husband all the time. I bring her there. I get her a job. I get her off drugs. I get these kids in school. I get her together. She go find the drugs in Indiana. So she leaves. The baby ain't even one, y'all. She literally left me. I go to the uh, courthouse and I call the child protective service and they say, well, the kids are not in danger, so you have to keep them. I said, well, I don't have no money to be keeping no four extra kids. And they said, uh, they wouldn't give me daycare. They said, but they gave me a, a welfare check for $300. What the hell can you do with $300? So 
I decided to go file temporary custody. And I walk into the courthouse and the judge knew who I was and told me exactly what to do. And I got permanent custody. And I just prayed. I was like, God, I can't do this again. Because it was so heartbreaking to see my sister. I had temporary custody with my sister's kids. And she came in and she took those kids. And everybody was against me. Oh, she could do, she could take care of her own kids. But I knew she was going to do to her daughter exactly what my mama did to us. And she turned them into holes and crackheads. I have one of her daughter I raised is in jail for 20 years for tying up this old white lady and robbing her house. My sis, my niece, Chris, is out there. Who kids I have selling pussy. The other one was on drugs. She burned her baby feet out. I said, and then everybody said, like, oh, my God, she didn't take care of the kids. I said, but when I was trying to tell y'all, she, she was going to do the same thing my mama did to us. And I just blocked them out. And when I, when I went and got those four kids, and I just said, God, I can't do it. I said, I don't want the heartbreak behind this when she had to come back and get them. And I don't want, I just don't want to deal with them. And so... When I got the permanent custody and I'm crying and upset and, and I just, I, I'll never forget this. I had a voice in my ear said, keep them kids. I got you. And I am not lying to y'all. When I tell you my career started moving like crazy. And I remember riding down the street. Said, I was like, God, is this the hell what you were talking about? You say you, when you got me and I still got them. My husband stays home in Atlanta with them. And they, I think the oldest one is 14 and the baby is about to be 10. So you are a star. You know that you're a star human being. Are you religious? Obviously, you keep saying God. Are you um, religious? I don't go to church in time because the pastor fuck too many people these days. <laughs> 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 you could be religious without going to church. Well, I, I believe there's a higher power. Yeah, I really do. I don't know what you call it, but I believe that what the way it works for me. I believe if you truly believe in what you ask for and you put it out in the universe, it will come back. So I do think it's something out there that's bigger than all of us. I don't know what you call it. We, you know, we call it God, but I, I that's what I believe. But you feel like you are able to communicate with that power. Yes, I do. And you make and that power and you can make things happen. Yes, I do. That's wonderful. I, I think do. it's wonderful, but a lot of people don't even have the power to believe. If you believe that the belief, just the belief alone is moving your life along, I, I think there's a lot of people out there that don't even have the power to believe in that belief. You know what I'm saying? Well, do that person have the power to believe in themselves? I think people don't. I think people look for excuses. And you are the epitome. You are a story that needs to be told. People need to see you. I think it's, it's um, th there was destiny for you to be uh, emblematic of what you went through and for the world to see. I think that it beyond- was, It was a teacher that put that in me. I had a teacher that, I and mean, I've talked about it in the book and so many other times. I'm a teacher by, by the name of Miss Troop. You know, this is back Is she still they, alive? No, she passed away. Um, you know, I was a little kid that was dirty and stinky and I would come to school and she would have a gym bag and she said, all you got to do, Patricia, is get here early. And and because she knew the kids picked at me and she would literally take me in the bathroom, wash me, change my underwear, comb my hair, brush my teeth and make sure I had breakfast every morning. And that I never forgot. And I think that's why when I see a kid, that's why I take on my my family, uh, because when I see a kid in poverty, I see rabbit, that little girl who would go through that side door, at English Avenue Elementary. That's what I see. And that's what irked me. And I don't want any child in this country, if I can help it, or in this world, to feel what I felt as a child. So I can't save the world. So I try to save the kids that's closest to me, which is family members. And people are like, I wouldn't keep on taking everybody's kid, but I don't ever want that child to experience what I experienced. And, you know, I have the nine-year-old at the house. She talks so much, y'all. I be wanting to slap the hell out of her. And she got <laughs> alopecia. And it's, it's, it's the cutest little thing, you know. We the other day I got ready to whoop her. She's like, "Don't hit me, mommy," because she called me mommy and auntie. And I said, "Why I can't hit you? You know you can't hit me. My hair gonna fall out." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "David, you right. You gonna lose a plaque." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <this is, laughs> but I, I, you know, I they they know I'm not their mom, but they know I'm their auntie and I'm their granddaughter, whatever they are. Cause, but they they know I love them. 
And it's, it's so crazy because. And do they take care of each other? Your your other kids and their siblings? Yeah, and my son is my son. I have three grandkids. So we all do it together. And my oldest daughter, when I got me, my I have a daughter that's 22. Her name is Gariana. So when I took, when my niece ran off for her kids, she was getting ready to go to a black school, HBCU. I think she was applied for Howard. And then she was like, no, nope, I'm going to college locally. And I was like, why, Gary? You need that, you know, you want that black experience to go to an HBCU. She said, I'm not leaving my daddy here with all these kids. So she went to school wow. locally. She writes on the show. And, you know, I honor her so much for that because she sacrificed getting a black college experience because her mama career you know, her, because her mama was ch chasing a career and she never complained. And she writes on the show, Howie. <laughs> That's amazing. You are like just this ray of sunshine that is lighting everybody around you. You really are. And I, I got to tell you, you know, yeah, every time I've called you to do something and to help me, you have always been there. And calling you to be on this podcast, you're you're here. And I know you're doing a lot of press right now for I season am. two. You're in town. Uh, you come from show to show to show. I've been seeing you all over TV and hearing you. I just love hearing your voice. And I love hearing you talk. And I love watching what you do. Um, do you, what has been the hardest part for you? Is there anything hard or you don't, I know you don't dwell. Is there anything that is really, what's the toughest part of what you're doing? Um, <laughs> what is the toughest part? Um, no, because people think that, you know, I'm doing a TV show and she's performing and she's uh, here and she's flying here and flying you there. Know There's what? gotta be something leaving that is- Leaving my husband and leaving my family, it's you tough. know, it's, it's tough sometimes, you know, because you want to keep you want to keep that marriage. Thank God for FaceTime. I think that saves a lot of marriage. At least you can see him. Hey, how you doing? Uh, so I think it's, you know, with the travel, the travel, with, you know, all the time. But he's he's down for it. I think it makes the marriage better. I mean, great. Well, <laughs> no, that's what you always say. Too. I always say people say how you've been married for 42 years. The fact that I'm very rarely home, it makes you love me more. I find that people who, who really like me haven't spent any time with me. <laughs> is, it, is it hard with your upbringing and what you experienced with your mom? You said you had a lot of insecurities and you didn't want to be famous, but now you're in the spotlight. For the most part, people adore everything you're doing, but mm -hmm. I'm sure there's always going to be people that are haters, that are oh, yeah. saying negative stuff. Does that affect you at all because, more so because of what you went through as a you kid? You know, when people come with their opinion and tell me what they don't like, I said, my real daddy didn't like me either. He left, I didn't give a fuck about him and I don't give a fuck about you. That's your comeback? That's my comeback. Yeah. That's a great comeback. <laughs> that is a I don't comeback. give a fuck about you. I've, I've got are you on social media? Mm -hmm. they, they say ugly things all the time. She, you fat. Oh, I don't like your show. You cussing. I don't give a fuck. You don't like Louis Vuitton, but do you walk in Louis Vuitton and tell them people you don't like their person? You walk your ass right on by and mind your fucking business and go on down there to H&M where you can afford the item at. Okay? I don't care what you like. I'm 50. I'm at the point where I fuck off. Go find what you do like, because I found what I like. Because the reason why you don't like what I'm doing, because you can't do what the fuck I'm doing. Because if you could do it, you would shut your mouth and do it. That's a great philosophy. Do you not? And it's, it's so you you don't read comments? I do read comments. She does. And she I, has I a respond. response. And you respond. <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, fuck you. Doesn't it breed more comments, though? I feel they like do, those people but you, but want you know, a response from you. But you know what? I have uh -huh. something called the crack babies. Yeah. The like, what? I have I have a group called the Crack Babies, and like Beyonce got the beehive. Yeah. yeah. So you fuck with me, you about to get a whole bunch of angry white women on your ass that can that can spell and speak correct English. <laughs> 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 it's an army of them, baby. You say something to me, and them Crack Babies get a hold of it, it's over. I have a whole uh, Facebook book group called Miss Pat Crack Baby. Mess with me if you want to. Yeah. I don't have to say much anymore. <laughs> yeah. You just send them after the I mean, if trolls. you say, if you, last, when the season came out the first time uh -huh. and people was talking crap, oh my God. They was all over it. You don't know what you're talking about. All I had to say, fuck off. And then the crack babies took care of it. How long were you in prison? A year. And what were you in for? Um, trafficking cocaine. Where'd you get caught? I might, I had a cousin and um, she, um, well, she was underage and I was taking care of her because my, my aunt was alcoholic too. And she took a case for me. She went to prison for, uh, she hit the drugs wrong, but the, the guy knew it was my dope. So at the time, I think I was 17. I went to jail and she went to juvenile. I ended up getting a year 
and she ended up getting uh I think she did two a year two years in juvenile, but she ended up having a baby while she was in jail. Wait, wait, wait. Who's the father? A guard? No, like, no, 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 no. She she went to she went she went, she went, she went she pregnant. Went, she went, she went pregnant. pregnant. Yeah. So you, when you get a year, when you're put in jail, when you you know you're going to be there for a year, is that ominous just to have the door close behind you like is that is that scary is it what is what is that well, it, i think the most painful thing for me with going to jail howie that i can't get back is i missed my daughter went to kindergarten i was not there i was in jail that's one of the things that still kind of float to the top with me because and me and me and my daughter have had a like in the beginning, we had a really rough relationship because I sold drugs in front of her school, too. And she had enough sense to say she I remember her saying, Mama, why can't you pick another place to sell drugs at? Why you got to do it in front of my school? <laughs> I'm so damn stupid. I said, I said, look, here, I was here before those grand those grandfathers. I was I was here before those stop selling drugs school sign was here. So I was grandfathered in. Yeah. <laughs> you want to find you another school. <laughs> She was embarrassed because you were selling drugs at her school. I was just embarrassed when you showed up and you were bald. Do you remember that? It's yeah. very different. <laughs> so you, you were selling drugs at her school. So she in front of her school. In front and of her school. Directly in front of her. Like from mm -hmm. here to there. And she knew. Yeah. What she, you were, what you were her doing. Her classroom was on the side I sold drugs on. <laughs> so but she I, could look out the window. <laughs> but she knew she had the wherewithal at the, how old was she? She was a kid. You said kindergarten. She, She'd be five. Yeah. So she was aware of what drugs are? Yeah, because she was always down there in the trap with me. She knew what her mom was doing. Wow. And if you go to jail, you have to say goodbye to your kid. The door closes. How do you, is it dangerous? Was it dangerous for you at all? No, I, I, I mean, I was young. I was 17. I yeah. fought. But no. I was, Did you fight? Did you, were you in yeah, fights? Yeah, I, I fought. Mm -hmm. well, Nobody was to trying fight? to like mess with me or anything. Just women running their damn mouths. I did my I did my time I did my time county because I had other charges pending on other things. So when it was I had I got sentenced to a year and I had some other stuff pending. So when it was time, they give you a EI. I mean, they give you a number and then they just literally take you down to the prison, turn you around. But I did most of my time county because um, I had other charges pending. Are you in a cell alone? No. I was actually in a cell with a crackhead that I used to sell drugs to, and she could <laughs> sing how she would sing me to sleep every night. She could sing like Whitney Houston. <laughs> really? <laughs> so that was so you had fun. Like it was, there, was there, there was an upside to it. I mean, the only bad side is that you couldn't go home. So anything, any kind of situation you get in, you make do of what you got. You know, but I, the reason I'm asking is because I had COVID uh, a couple of months ago, and the hardest. Don't tell thing, me you felt like you was in jail. <laughs> That's, but, but I'm saying, I don't know. I'm That's such a softie. Version. No, and I was put in... Uh, a room by yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's what jail feel like. <laughs> in a no. nice room, by the way. My old room. No, it was but, a nice room. Right, and I, I'm telling you that I went fucking nuts. With and I said, if I, if I had to go to prison, I think I would just die. Like, when you don't have anything to do, as busy as you are, and as, as, as much as your mind works... Each and every day to be in that cell, do you feel like, does it make you suicidal? Does it make you angry? Does well, it make you? Well, you know, okay, you're behind a cell and then during the day your doors pop open. Oh, right? they do? Yeah. And then you got a little common area that you go to. Right. You can use the phone, you can watch TV and you can watch enough TV. You play games, you talk, you have conversation, you look up, it's time to go to bed again. It's the same old thing for a year. You go to court, you go Do you to find it after the year when you are let out and you go? Do, do, is there a, an acclimation to being out in the real world? Hold on. I'm sorry. I need to... I There's a light that keeps flickering on and off in here that's driving me what nuts. What is it? Is it what that is one? That? <laughs> what is that? What is that? I swear. It's, we're going to have to put like some kind of warn, warning for flashing lights during this episode. What is it? Okay. Got it? Sorry. No. That's, that's my son, by the way. <laughs> Are you just like me, Howard? All my kids work on my set, too. <laughs> yeah, all my kids work here. and uh, He just procreates so that he could have people work for because him. Because I believe that uh, production and reproduction should it's be together. The same thing. <laughs> well, you know, that's why you have a kid, so somebody can turn the TV and go get you a cold, cold glass of water when you don't want exactly. to. <laughs>
<laughs> but what was I asking? Where, where was I with this? You were comparing her time in prison to your to time COVID. <laughs> with COVID in your big house. Oh, I said when you, after you get into a routine for a year and you're in an eight by eight cell with the same person with Whitney Houston singing and you're out in the, and you got, is it, they always say that, uh, is it, do you have to get sea legs again just to be outside or to be no. free or not? No. Mm -mm. I mean, I, I don't know what it like to do a lot of time. Like I've never done 10 years. Right. You probably miss a lot, but I was only gone a year and I was talking to people every day and then you have visitors and stuff like that. So it kind of went by kind of fast. Wow. I hear for the most part, too, it's hard. Like once you're in, it's hard to get out of the system. I don't mean staying in jail, but then it, like there's check ins and there's it's easier to get back in the system, whether it's like curfew, you break curfew in any little thing you do. What is that's not called curfew. It's called parole. Parole. Or right. But no, no, no. But I mean, there's curfew <laughs> as part of your parole. Right. There's certain regulations that you can't break. Well, that, I mean, now I wasn't now my, I got a brother who just got out of the federal penitentiary and he has a he has a curfew. Yeah. He has to he has to be in the house by 11 o'clock. How yeah. long was he in penitentiary? Uh, he had just gotten 10 years. COVID hit, he got asthma. So he was able to get out because he was a very, he got asthma really bad. Lucky. I told, I said, dude, you're the luckiest motherfucker I know. He was supposed to do 10 years to the door. And, and he got out in how long? Uh, it was doing 15 it. months. Yes. Is that bothering you, the flashing light? Mm -mm. It's the I don't even see only it. time people enjoy asthma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness I have asthma. <laughs> and he works on my set too, but you know, um, yeah, for he done, he's done a long time like that. I haven't, so it doesn't bother. I mean, you know, that little year I did it, and I just knew I was I didn't want to go back. Right. Right. I, I'm afraid that people with uh, do you get it? Well, Somebody's going to have stroke? a seizure. A seizure. Like, you don't have, you, yeah, you don't have seizures. I just got vertigo, but I don't even see that like y'all talking about. You don't? You don't even see that? You don't that? see it? There's you don't like see a, a flashing, flashing light? strobe in the room. What are you doing? <laughs> he just keeps adjusting the light up and down. What? There, it just did it again as you're walking away. It just did no. it again as you, yes, it did. No, it didn't. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did? And then we looking over a damn light. What? Oh, just do the podcast with your eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the light right down. Turn the light right down. We'll just use these. Just Turn the overhead lights right off. We're very focused on the no. visual. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, anyway, what was I? Uh, Do I you only know. have two kids? I no. only have two. To me, that's a lot. No, She's talking him. to me. Oh, no, three. I have one narcissist who thinks that everybody's <laughs> talking about her. It's all about me. I have three kids. She has two kids. This is the only grandkids you have? Yeah. 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 Why? Do you want me to you take care of some it. for you? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you can have my grandkids. If you I like. want more grandkids. I'm trying to talk him into talk having him into having it. to procreating. He would but have kid he would have kids even before he got married. I think he wants kids. He's not married. He has a model rescue service. You always say that. What's I, a model rescue service? <laughs> well, he finds uh, models in need and he takes them in and nurses them back to health. Wall down models? What? What do you mean models? Like oh. people used to be like Instagram models. Oh, he take hoes in. <laughs> uh, is that what you call them, no. Alex? Do you see what hoes. You... No. Alex. He say he rescue hoes. Is that what he do? They I don't hear like you. to be called that. Pardon me. They, they don't like to be called that. They don't no. want to be called Instagram models. <laughs> oh, no. 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 Hoes. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> why is your husband? I mean, why is your son into rescuing hoes? <laughs> You know, he's, try he's trying to be a retired pimp. <laughs> no, he's not working them. And they're not, they're not, they, they're Instagram models and he brings them in. Sometimes they, and he nurses them back to happiness and what then he, he releases them into the wild. Into the wild. So what did he make off of them? I mean, he putting IV juice in them. What is he making off of them? Alex, she's talking to you. You're a really good person and you take people in and take care of them and help them. That's but they wasn't hoes. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, talk to her. She's telling you. I, I don't know how to answer. It's just, it's it's really just, uncomfortable. Just happens. Alex, go get you some vagina that don't have feet. Uh, uh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 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 What is that? Uh, uh, he, he rescuing hoes. Everything is war out on hoes. <laughs> you made them hoes. They're just on Instagram. Uh, they're hoes. What okay. kind of? What is a vagina without feet? The kind that everybody done dug off in. It's like a mall dog. Just, ooh, ooh, ooh. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? I've never heard of that before. 
I'm quite sure you haven't. <laughs> does, your, does your does your son uh, is he going out with somebody? Is he married? My son is uh, engaged. My oldest son, my youngest son, just want to. Um, he used to be. He used to. He really fat, so he just went on this fucking diet, and he lost all of his weight. And, and? because we lived in a white neighborhood, I don't think the white girl wanted a big fat black guy. They like him, but they like him a little bit more fit. He lost all of his weight. I, I say he lost weight so he can get pussy. Excuse my French. Yeah. So now he just. Out there, he's and doing what? Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was trying to tell you about my son. Yeah. Look, my son is not rescuing hoes off of Instagram. He's not putting life back into it. Where is your son getting his pussy? Uh, <laughs> uh, I think from his cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think my son sees Instagram? But you say he's he's rebuilding these hoes like calls and putting them back on the line so they can be auctioned off. No, you're no, saying that. No, you're saying that. Oh, I thought you was telling me he was taking old hoes and turning them into new hoes. No. No, I no. didn't know. My dad, my dad just ahead, doesn't explain. know how to... <laughs> no. <laughs> explain. He meets women... Mm -hmm. women mm -hmm. and a lot of the time he meets them from Instagram when he first sees them and then he becomes friends with them and then a lot of them end up staying at his house and then when they decide they don't want to stay there anymore they get their own place but nothing else happens he Am don't I, get no. He don't have sex. I don't with? think so. He no, no, me. he doesn't. No. Alex, Alex, no. defend yourself. He doesn't have sex with them. How you know? Because I don't think he does. Alex? Alex, you, you out here just letting women live at your house? Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> are, are you having sex with him? No. Nope. <laughs> Who are you having sex with, Alex? His, his, Other women? His hand. No. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? You're not a bad looking guy. You you just stop taking these holes in and no, rescue them. No, he's just, he's too, can I tell you the honest truth? My dad was making a joke. He's honestly just too nice. He becomes friends with wait, literally. Wait, 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 wait. No, no. First of all, these people listen to this uh, program. So he, he, I know he gets what he needs and not necessarily from the people that are living in his apartment. <laughs> And he's nice to people, and sometimes he gives them shelter. It's like finding a wounded bird, and you, which he has done too. What do you he think I was going to say that you stopped me from saying no, no, no? Because you're saying you're making it seem like he doesn't get any pussy. I no, I did not I would, say that. I wouldn't pick up a wounded bird. <laughs> yeah, what? Well, he would. <laughs> Well then, literally, what's literally, he gonna? What is there to fuck? Didn't he literally? <laughs> no, a bird that's already walking. <laughs> can I tell you? I'm flying. <laughs> why the part, why you I want to beat up pussy, Alex? No, can I Alex. Tell you? <laughs> honestly, honestly though, I think like five episodes ago, if you go back and look, he literally did pick up I said that. a wounded bird. But he didn't fuck it. He doesn't fuck no. birds. For those who are uh, listening, I if hope Peter has got more penis than a bird can handle. <laughs> wow. If not, that's you need right. to buy your baby. That's a, a great, that's a great that's a great t-shirt. <laughs> For him. I'm going to make him a t-shirt. I have more penis than a bird can handle. <laughs> Alex is going to make you edit all this out. No, he won't. No, he won't. And I think that's great. I think that's great. He does. My son, I'm going to brag, my son has more penis than a bird can handle. How about yours? We black. We bless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You ever seen a bird shit look poop and go on by their business? <laughs> a bird poop? Yeah, they just, it's this little splatter. It's never a lot. It's just a little splatter. Well, like, I'll tell you, if he fucks a bird, you'll see so much shit come out of the other side. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, he probably this get the going, bird flu. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? I don't know. <laughs> well, Alex, your dad is Howard Mandel. I know you can find better holes than that. Come on now. Stop picking up. Stop, stop <laughs> rescuing these holes. I hear Caroline laughing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> your dad is Howard Mandel. Now, come on. You can get better pussy than that, How, baby. <laughs> so then tell what should he do? I don't know. I don't buy pussy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but are you, do you, have you learned anything today, Alex? I don't, I don't know. I still Alex. don't know how much a bird can handle. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been, have you ever been with a bird that has said please Alex more? No, I've never been with a bird. <laughs> He's never been with a bird. <laughs> I tell you, put down that American Express card and pick up one of those prepaid credit cards and make somebody think you're struggling and you'll find real love. 
There you go. <laughs> Your Caroline. Go. There you go. We get more out of this interview, really. You really helped my family. <laughs> I told you, you're here to inspire. People got to know. People... I was buying no pussy in this day and time. It costs too much. <laughs> Have you ever yeah. paid? Yeah, he said, yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> they want pocketbooks. They want trip. They want flown in. So have you ever seen somebody that your son has been with and not been happy? Like, I would imagine you're pretty judgmental. Uh, yeah, my, my oldest son had a little girl who said she was a model, an actor, singing. Then about, I didn't even know her name. I could not stand this broad. Did you let her know? Oh, yeah. What'd you oh, say? I said, bitch, I don't like you. Oh. <laughs> was that right yeah. after, hello, this is my girlfriend? Uh, uh, well, she came to visit one time. Right. And she was just thought she was everything. And I was like, get this bitch out of my house. I cannot stand this hoe. Right. And then I remember I told her one day, I said, you are a tramp ass hoe. Excuse me for cursing. And she said, ditto. <laughs> And what? I said, D D ditto, ditto to you. <laughs> yeah, and I called my daughter. I said, what the fuck is ditto? <laughs> <laughs> you don't fucking ditto me. <laughs> she said, well, what, what was the conversation? And I told her. And she said, oh, that means back at you. I said, that bitch said I'm a trap asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so then what? Did your son have to break up with her then? Did yeah, was I was like, send that bitch home. She's a piece of crap. And did he? Yeah, he sent her home. Yeah. He didn't want to stand up for himself. Well, she was no good. She didn't like me either. She was from Atlanta, so she sent her home. Okay. Are you anti any, like, actress or model for your kids? Is that oh, We don't live in that world. We live in a real world where people just work normal But people. she said she was a model, right? She was shit. She was, yeah. she was what your brother be picking up, fake hoes. Yeah. Instagram model. When the hell we get an Instagram model? T Tara Banks is a model. That's the only thing that ever been model. These hoes get on there and take their clothes off on social media. It's not model. You are a butt naked bitch showing your ass. That's what you are. Okay? Okay. That's it. Lessons learned. Well, wow. I was going to go home. And take a picture butt naked, but now I know that I shouldn't do that. But you Thank got you. kids, so why would no, you? No, I'm just joking. It was but so she makes, well, <laughs> my daughter makes an extra, no, no I'm going to just tell her. My She makes herself an extra $150 a month on OnlyFans. She's really. Doing what? Stuff. Just stuff? I don't know. <laughs> Is it private? No, that otherwise, how can I make $150? And I have a Feet Finder account. What? Feet Finder? Have you heard of Feet Finder? No. You take pictures of your feet and you put them up on Feet Finder and people pay you for pictures of your feet. Oh my God. Do you see the little bit of toenails I got? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got bird feet. <laughs> they don't want to see my feet. No, I bet you they would. You should try. I don't have time to be You can make that. an extra hundred. I can't even tie my shoes, okay? I don't want no hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> 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 if I wanted that, I can go do special things to my husband. He'll yeah. probably pay me a hundred fifty dollars. Are you I'll still sexually active? Dad. Ain't you still sexual Dad. acting? Dad. Yeah. Dad. Well, thank you. Uh, you older than me. So, yeah, we both trying to fuck Harry. I yeah. mean, Howard. Yeah. Call me Harry. <laughs> <laughs> fuck Harry. <laughs> I think we should be done. This is going off the rails. It yeah, is. it's this going is the off after the rails. show. You are great. I can't thank you enough. Look for season two on BET Plus. Season two is on BET Plus right yes. now. All ten episodes. And you got to read the book. The, the book and is your still Netflix in... special. We didn't even. Oh, talk. the Netflix special. Yeah, yeah it's called Y'all Want to Hear Something Crazy. Robert Townsend directed yeah. and Wanda Sykes produced it. I love them. Thank you. I thank love you. Them. I still, I would, any time you ever want me for anything, I'm there for She's it. not asking well, you. you know? <laughs> I will. Come on down to Atlanta. I, 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 hey, I have a role for you. Oh, <laughs> oh. Come on. I'm quite sure you never worked for the BET family before. I I, I, I would be the shit if I brought you in there. I would really, really be the shit. Yeah. Oh, oh, I, would, I, would, I would love to. But Don't anyway. play with me. You know I'm going to call you and we ain't got no AGT money. American Got Talent. Yeah, yeah but I'm not, I'm, I'm not, if, I, if I'm in the air, I'm not traveling. That's why I'm showing you I'm doing holograms. <laughs> I'm staying you doing hologram for, my, for AGT? I'm not showing up to anything. Well, AGT is right No, here. it's right down the, this is, AGT I'm afraid is, to get in an airplane. I didn't even go to JFL this year. He has OCD. I own I, you know, I looked for you. I was like, where is how Remember you there? said, are you going to be here? Yeah. I said, yeah, come in and do my podcast. And come into the room at three o'clock. You didn't show up. I was there on a hologram. No, I I wasn't there. I told my people to tell you that I was I was I flew out. They didn't tell me. They didn't. No, no. but thank God I like hearing it from you in person. Oh no, I told him I said Howard asked me to do his podcast, but I had to go do a gig, so I flew okay. out to Phoenix. I think. All right, but um, it's better to see you in person. So you're not going back to Asia. You can get your own plane by AGT. yourself. Okay. So just get on a plane, just you and your kids, who you who you don't mind touching you. 
He doesn't want anyone touching me. I don't want, want my kids me. touching me. <laughs> now it's just you. getting uncomfortable. <laughs> End it! <laughs> 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 Thank <laughs> you.